In this video, we're going to look at how we can add multiple animations to a sprite and how we can cycle between those animations without any annoying crossover. So let's make a start. First thing we need to do is have a sprite. And this could be any sprite, but I'm just going to do a player because the player is normally got the most animations. Now, inside a construct, you've got animation frames. So we've got animation frame zero. So if I was to fill this in with a color, which is green, this is my first frame. And if I was to add a frame, I've got my second frame and I can edit this animation separately. I can keep going on through this way. So if you're creating a very, very simple game, if you're learning construct for the first time, using the animation frames in construct is a nice way to start. But as you start making more and more games, other tools such as Pixel or any other tools to create animations are much better. Our other solution is using something called a sprite sheet. This is an animation sheet that someone's made, either through another tool or one we've downloaded off somebody else. So best place to start if you're looking for sprite sheets is Open Game Art. It has loads of Creative Commons art, which means you can use it as long as you credit the creator. And this one from Bauma is really, really good. So this is for a fighting game. There's lots and lots of different animations. So I've downloaded this one. I'll also put a link in the description if you want to do the same. And what I'm going to do is go to Construct, right click, Import Frames from Strip. And I'm going to click on that sprite sheet that we were given. Now we get this option here, and this bit's really important that we fill this in correctly. So it's going to ask how many horizontal and vertical cells they are. This is just simply counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by one, two, three, and four. So we do eight by four. Now if we look at the animations, we take this fighting animation, for instance, it goes across the way, so it goes horizontally. You sometimes get sprite sheets where they go vertical, so you see the animations go downwards. So we need to make sure that option set to horizontal. And replace animation will just get rid of anything you've got already, such as my horrible green squares. So we're gonna import, and our animations are in. Now we'll zoom in to make this much clearer. Now what's important when you import a sprite sheet is hitboxes. Now it's going to generate a hitbox for you and as we get to different characters, different characters are going to have different hitboxes. And when it comes to standing in a platform game, this is going to really mess with how your player stands and switch between the animations or switch between the hitboxes. So this is something that you've got to tweak around with and play around with, but to keep it really simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a flat floor so when I'm walking I don't fall through the ground and just apply this to the whole animation. If you're making the game more serious today and you've got lots of animation changes, then taking time through every single frame to make sure your hitboxes are correct is really, really important. So now we've got that set up, we're going to clone and duplicate this first animation and just rename it. And the first one is going to be my idle animation. Idle meaning not moving. So this is just the first frame. And let's move that out the way so we can see that. It's just the first room of the animation. The rest of them are not needed. So I can go through it and I can just delete all of these that I don't need. So I'm just left with my idle frame. This is probably the most tedious part about this whole process. I'm going to go through and just make sure my idle frame is left over. Now before I carry on and do my next one, I'm going to click on my idle frame. And I can set the speed. So the speed is done from how many frames per second it's running at not how many seconds it takes to run through the animation. So we're usually running at 60 frames per second, but this can be changed in the project settings. So if you would want in the animation to cycle all the way through in a full second, then we'll set this to 60, it'd be really fast. I'm gonna keep it as five, so the animations are really clear for this video. We've also got loop, do you want it to loop? Okay, so it's gonna repeat the animation forever. If we don't want it to repeat forever, we can have a repeat count to how many times it goes through the animation before it stops. We can repeat it to a certain frame. And then ping pong means it goes right to the end of the animation. And then instead of starting from the beginning again, it goes back through the animations again. And then there's a bit of information if you need more help. So now we've got that done. I'm going to duplicate my first animation again. Rename it to crouch. And then I'm going to get rid of everything but my crouch animation, which is just this animation here. So I'm going to go through to the rest. And I'm going to delete them all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly time lapse me going through this process. I'm going to add another five more animations.
Okay, so now I've got my five animations set up. I can delete my initial import and just delete that now. And you see, we've also got the option to preview any of these if we want to see them as we're working on them. So with that done, we're going to close it. I'm going to resize him a little bit so he's a bit bigger and just place him down. I'm also going to add the behavior of platformer just so we've got some different functions that we're able to use when checking for animation. So best thing to do when adding the animations is we add them one at a time and we always check back through to see if there's any overlap with some of the animation properties. And this will make sense as we go through. So let's start with the idle animation. Now, to be idle, the player has not got to be moving. So we're just going to invert that and that's our player idle. And we can add the animation and we can say idle. Done. Nice and easy. And we can copy and paste this, invert it back to say it's moving. And now we can set this to running. So now if the player is moving at all, they're going to do the running animation. So we can test this. And as we move, we get the running animation. I'm not mirroring my character if I face the other way. Video on that will be in the end cards if you want to show how to flip the character. But we're able to move and we're able to do our idle. Next one, we need to look at jumping. So we're going to add a new event, player. I'm going to check if the player is on the ground or not. So is on floor. We're going to invert that. And if so, we're going to do player dot set animation to jumping. We go back through it and we check if there's any overlaps. So is it possible for the player to not be on the floor and also be moving? Yes, it is. They can move while in the air. So what we need to do is just take this one attach it to this one and invert. So now we're saying that in order to run, they must be on the floor and they must be moving. And that way we make sure that we only get the jumping animation, we only get the running animation when we've asked them. So run it again, we jump, we get the jumping animation, we run and then we get our idle animation as well. Good, moving on to the next one then, let's do the crouching. Now for crouching, we need the keyboard. So we're gonna add a new object type, scroll down to our keyboard, with our keyboard in place, what we can do is we can add an event, keyboard, we can check key is down. We're gonna check if they're pressing downwards. If so, player.set animation to crouch. Again, we look back through our previous animations and see if there's any possible crossover. Now, is it possible to hold down key while they're not moving? Yes, it is. And this causes a bit of an issue. So in order to prevent this overlap from happening where the computer's got to decide which animation it's going to prioritize, we're going to take this line of code, plot on this one, and invert it. So now they're only going to be idle if they're not moving and if they're not holding the down key. Can they hold the down key while jumping? Yes, they can. So again, we're just going to invert this one. And can they hold the down key when moving? Technically, yes. So we'll invert that one as well. Again, we run it, we test it. So now we've got crouching, jumping, running, and idle. No crossover, none of them in the wrong order. Last one I'm gonna look at in this video is punching. So we add a new event again. We check is key down, spacebar. If so, player, dot set animation, or oh, gone past it, set animation, punch done and then again we look back through is there any crossover that's possible so can we hold space why not moving yes we can okay so what we need to do is again just move this down and invert it can we hit space when running yes we can so we invert it so this one always takes priority so if we hold space we always do the punching one over any of our animation okay same for jumping, can we hit space in the air? Yes, we can. So we want to change this, invert it. So punching always takes priority, okay? So if we're holding space down, we're always going to punch no matter what. 
If you want to make it where the jumping always takes priority instead of the punching, then what we would do is we would check that they must be on the floor to punch. So we do it that way. And actually for our crouching, we should be checking that one as well because really we should be only on the floor if we're going to crouch. Okay, so it's just all about checking these different properties. Final thing that we've got is can we crouch and punch at the same time? Well, no, because that's two different animations that are going to happen at the same time. And we need to basically prioritize one. If we're pressing both the keys, which one's going to play instead? So for my case, I'm going to say if they're pressing both, we're always going to punch. Okay, now if we were to invert both of these, if we were to press both keys, then no animation would come out. So sometimes we have to prioritize one over the other. So again, we test this for a final time. So we can run, we're able to jump. Oh, and our punch and crouch isn't working. So just need to quickly invert these because I need to check they are on the floor. So just a mistake there. But that's fine because you find out these mistakes by testing. And then we go again. We've got our punch, we've got our crouch, jump, run, and idle. So we found this useful and you can start to see the complex that comes with multiple animations. We've also got a really clear idea of how you can start adding these animations into your own game.